Welcome back to our video series on the play framework using Scala. And this video continues our work to switch the model from being memory based to using a database. In the last video, we created two tables. And now in order to use slick, we need some code that associates Scala elements with these tables. You can write these by hand. Uh, I prefer not to, and you'll see why in a bit. You, if, one thing is if you write them by hand, you actually don't have to use SQL to generate the tables. You are able to uh, simply generate the tables from the slick code, uh, the Scala code using slick. Personally, I find it easier to write the SQL myself. Uh, you're, you, know, you, you are fully allowed to have a, a different uh, opinion on that but I'll show you what the Scala code for this looks like in just a bit. The way I like to do it is I write the SQL and then I use Slick's code generation capabilities. And you might have noticed one of the lines in here was Slick code gen, and that's what we're going to use now. So I've written a little application here. Uh, it's basically completely separate from our web app that calls Slick code gen uh, and the source code generator dot run. Now it turns out source code generator also has a .main in it. So you can run this directly from SBT, but then you have to type in a number of these strings as arguments. And as you can see, most of them are fairly long. So I like to actually put it as a file in my code because if for any reason I decide to change my database tables, I don't, uh, I will have to rerun this. And, and I don't want to have to retype in all of those commands. So the run, takes a profile, a driver, a URL, the output directory, the, uh, the uh, package that this is going into, and then uh, arguments for user, password, and whether it ignores invalid defaults and outputs multiple files. Okay, so here's all the settings that I'm using for this. This is the same URL that we set up in the application.conf for my local machine. And this is where all of my files are, are going. Basically, that is this app directory right here. And we said we're going into package models. So that would be right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to generate a new file and stick it in that directory when we run it. So if we go into SBT, And of course, since you added things to your build.sbt, running SBT might take a little bit longer than it has. And run main of models.codegen, this is codegen, it's in package models. Uh, remember, if you just type in run, it runs the web app. So if you want to run a separate main, we have to use the run main command inside of this because it's part of our play setup. And that ran, okay? And it printed out a whole bunch of stuff. But you'll notice over here, there is now a new file called tables.scala. And so there is a trait called tables that has, it actually has a fair bit of documentation that goes along with it. Um, but you can probably see why I prefer to write this SQL over this Scala code. Um, so this is specifying schemas. For example, here is the users table. It has a type called a table query. Uh, actually, here is users table query, and it uses this class, which says it has an ID, a username, and a password, and we get ID, username, and password there. In addition, there is a users row, okay? And these are things that we're going to, to see more when we start writing the queries and actually doing our database manipulation inside of, of Slick. So once again, you know, if you strip out all the comments that are in here, it's not that much longer than, than the SQL. Um, but, but in my experience, there, there are enough details to it that I find it easier to start by writing the SQL and then to, uh, to generate this from it. Um, you are more than welcome to, to write schemas in Scala on, on your own. Note that because this is a generated file, uh, you generally don't edit it. Uh, I would really strongly recommend that you don't edit that file. It gets created, you might go look at it, see what the structure is like, but, but don't edit it. If you accidentally do anything with it, feel free to run code gen again, and it will 
wipe out the changed version and give you a new version. Okay, so in some ways we are now all set up to start using our database. Uh, now we need to have a controller that will actually access our database and I am in the same style that we have done so far. I'm going to make a completely new controller here. So inside of controller, it moved tasks. I want to make task list five dot Scala. And we'll copy one of our other, let's see, I don't need code gen or application or build. I also don't need setup. I do like to have this around to refer to. I could be referring to tables instead, but I generally find this to be slightly easier to read. Um, okay, so this is a controller. I could either copy task list four or task list three. I'm going to start by bringing in task list four, and we will change this to a five. Uh, so it, when we went from three to four, it turns out that four was so short because we actually continued using the back end from three. In this case, I am going to continue using the front end from four and have my task list five uh, basically return this same, well, almost the same version of the view here has these links in them. We're going to make a copy of this and change those links so they use version 5. But there's a few other changes that we need to make in here. We need to make some, some changes so that this will access our database. We need to have another injected parameter here, something that tells us what uh, that we have a database controller. And it is going to be a protected val. No one else really needs to know about this. We're going to call it the db, db config provider. Of course, that's a variable name, so you can call it whatever you want. But its type is database config provider. And you see we get a new import here. I'll go ahead and put a new line. So this is sitting inside of the play API database slick. So there are elements of that. And we need a little comma there. OK. Um, in addition to that, so we should already have, oh, right now we do not yet have a, an execution context, but we're going to need to provide an implicit execution context. And the reason for that is because the database stuff is happening heavily in parallel, in case you weren't, you didn't see that, that's the Scala concurrent execution context. This is part of just the, the standard Scala library. What else do we need? So right now we extend the abstract controller. We're going to, and I'm going to go ahead and hit carriage return here. In addition to extending the abstract con controller, we are also going to add a width for has database config provider. And it takes a type argument of a JDBC profile. Okay, well, I don't think that's the JDBC pro. This is not the JDBC profile you were looking for. Uh, let's go with the slick.jdbc. Okay. So what this does is it provides us a variable called db that now exists and we can use it uh, inside of here to refer to the database. We also need to put in a line that tells our code that we want it to work with the database that we are using, in our case Postgres. Now once again this is one of the things that I really love about Slick is when I say that I want to use Postgres here, I simply include slick dot jdbc dot postgres profile of dot api dot underscore and if we were to replace this with a mysql profile all of a sudden this program would start working with mysql 
instead of uh, with Postgres. So it makes it very easy to switch between databases. One of the sad truths of SQL is that the details of SQL vary between different database implementations. Simple example between uh, Postgres and MySQL is one of them, MySQL likes double quotes around strings and Postgres wants uh, single quotes around strings. And if you are actually using a platform where you have to write your own database strings, then switching between those two could be a huge pain in a, in a large application. Slick is actually generating all of our queries for us, so we don't have to, uh, to worry about that. Okay. Um, that actually is probably sufficient. This should set up our... I guess we could come over here and type in run and then go to our web browser and try refreshing version 3 just to make sure this gets through a compiler and we haven't uh, put any typos in there. It runs. Okay. So this is a good place to stop here. We're all set up to really use our database inside of that application, but that means we're about to start working on our model. Okay, we're going to write our reverse revised model that attaches to a database instead.